Hey all, I'm comic books creator Joe Glass and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about getting into comics. No, this is not breaking into comics, i.e. a discussion about how to get into comic books and making them. That is a whole video all of its own. No, I'm talking to the viewers who don't read comics, but are interested. So you want to check out comics and find out more. Or you're a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and would love to read more adventures of those characters that you've come to love. Perhaps you're just looking to get into something a little bit different. So what's stopping you? The MCU films have proven to be a near unprecedented juggernaut at the box office and it shows no sign of stopping, pandemic notwithstanding, creating millions of new fans uh, for characters such as Captain Marvel, Black Panther and Iron Man. Yet those fans don't seem to be translating into the comic books themselves. Why is that? There are numerous possible reasons, almost as numerous and various as the potential readers who want to start reading comics themselves. One element, however, that I personally think is uh, a bit of a barrier into getting into it is an antiquated distribution model that has no desire to change with the times. For those who don't know, comic book distribution for nearly 30 years has been handled by a single distributor called Diamond Comic Distributors Inc, holding a near monopoly on the medium that ran up to as recent as 2020. This coincided with the rise of a specialty store and the introduction of a direct market system of ordering. Prior to this, and in countries outside of the US for a while afterwards, comics would be found pretty much anywhere. Supermarkets, newsstands, newsagents, corner shops, pretty much everywhere that sold periodicals would have comic books on the shelf somewhere. However, with the advent of Diamond, we saw comic shops become pretty much the only place where you could find comic books. In particular, single issue comic books. Certainly collections and graphic novels were still available in bookstores and are still available in bookstores to this day, but the single issue comic went from being somewhere where a kid might ask their parents for when they were at their local grocery shop to something that was simply no longer there. As a result, comics don't seem present to a general audience. Essentially, a new reader or fan would have to know about the existence of comic book stores, where to find one and how to get them. However, comic book shops aren't everywhere. Even more so for countries outside of the United States, comic book stores can be something of a rarity. For me, myself, my nearest comic book store is about 30 kilometers away from where I live, and that is in the most straightforward direct route. However, there are supermarkets and news agents within a five minute walk from me in every direction. Diamond, however, does not sell to supermarkets. They sell nearly exclusively to comic specialty stores alone. As a result, comics are not as accessible as they once were or could be, at least in print. For someone who is a potential new reader or fan, this is not the ideal. This is not at all to say that comic shops are themselves bad or part of the problem. Comic shops are wonderful. If you have one in your local area, you absolutely should check them out. There is nothing quite like being a new fan of superheroes and walking into a comic specialty store for the very first time and seeing the superheroes that you love everywhere. Certainly, however, many are resistant to going away from the current distribution method and the potential extra competition that may result in. The thing is, personally, if comics become more readily available to different venues, I don't think this would actually doom the comic book store. Will it be a challenge? Sure. Will it be a change? Definitely. But I'd argue that change needs to happen and great businesses can learn to adapt and actually roll with and excel and wind up doing better for it. After all, once a new reader becomes a comic book fan, they'll want more. More than you necessarily find in a general store. And that is where a specialty store comes in. The issue then isn't comic book shops, but rather a near monopolistic distribution model that doesn't think about or market to new audiences that aren't currently comic book readers. When the pandemic in 2020 started, they even unilaterally decided to stop working, which brought many comic book shops and comic book creators to a standstill. This of course threatened numerous livelihoods. However, we didn't see anywhere near the same level of problems happening to book distribution in the book markets. The book market and bookstores you see have multiple distributors. This did result in at least one publisher starting to work with other distributors, but that's a long story in and of itself and it still works to the direct market method of solely working with comic book shops. So how do you, the new, never read a comic book before reader, actually get a comic book? Well, there's a bunch of different ways out there. If you do know a comic book shop in your local area, you should really check them out. Or if they're closer to the current situation, check out if they do a click and collect service or curbside pickup or even home delivery. Just check out the shelves and see what jumps out to you. Another element which may put off a lot of new readers, in particular new fans of the next major recent comic book movie, is that they can't figure out where to start. This is arguably a tough decision, as after all, comic books have been going on for absolute decades, so there's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of issues to begin from. Moreover, many series have multiple number ones, so which is the real starting point? Do you really have to read over half a century's worth of continuity just to get up to date with your favourite characters? Here's the answer. It really doesn't matter. 
Personally, I've always found it a little bit odd that this is always brought up as a barrier or obstacle to new readers. I personally started reading comic books in the middle of a major event, and it didn't stop me from getting addicted. Similarly, comics aren't the only form of long-form storytelling. No one expects someone watching EastEnders to start watching it from the first episode back in 1985, and certainly no one's expecting anyone who started watching EastEnders in the late 2000s to not be a real fan. Start wherever you start and read at your own pace. Know a character that you're particularly interested? Let them be your way in. Grab absolutely anything with them in and go from there. At the end of the day, you don't need to know decades of history to enjoy most comics. Sure, some comics revel in the reference and reverence to past stories, but a lot of the time, even in those, you can get the gist of what's going on and potentially find something to enjoy. And hey, it may even hint at what you should read next. Some folks like to bring up how the comics on the stands don't look like the characters as they are on the films. Some even suggest that, that could put off those fans of the movies from getting into the comic books when they go into a comic book store. It is possible, but I think most people understand that generally between a book and a film, the adaptation does result in numerous differences and changes. And heck, nowadays more people than ever seem open to the idea of a multiverse, so they can easily just accept that this is one version of a story and this is another. Now I want to discuss another element which I think can put off a lot of new readers and if that's one of you I really do hope this gives you reassurance. It's worth noting that in comic book fandoms, as in numerous other fandoms, there is a toxic element of negativity and gatekeeping that puts off a lot of new fans. This ranges from a general preconception of what a comic book fan looks like or should be to sadly an actually trollish hate group. I wish it weren't a thing, but sadly I do have to admit that there is some of it around. The important thing to bear in mind however, they may be loud but there are not that many of them, there are exceptionally fewer of them than there are of everyone else. For every one jerk that tells you you're not a real fan because you don't know the story that came out three decades before you were even born, there are going to be dozens of others who actually love that you're getting into comic books and want to talk to you about it. For every person who tries to quiz you on your knowledge because you're wearing a comic book t-shirt or a movie t-shirt, or even worse, just because you're a girl. There are going to be thousands more who are just happy that you love the same characters that they do and would love to share that with you. The comics community by and large is a welcoming place and the general media's focus on that particular element of toxic fandom blows the significance of that group well out of proportion. Generally if you look for comic book stores or groups online that don't have the word gate in it you're going to find a good set of people who are welcoming and don't have any kind of hidden agendas beyond love of the medium itself. Potentially maybe even new friendships too. Anyone who takes issue to the presence of new fans who may be women, people of colour and or queer absolutely don't deserve any attention paid to them. There are tons of people who love that you love the same things that they do. End of the day, whether you're a fan because of the cartoons or because of the films or because of the video games or indeed the comics themselves, you are a fan. That's all that matters. Okay, one final bit to let you know about. So you've heard about an upcoming new release that sounds really exciting to you, or you've found that series that you absolutely love and you don't want to miss a single issue. How do you make sure that happens and make sure you get your copy? The easiest, best, and frankly, most essential way to do that is by setting up a pull list with your local comic book shop. So what is a pull list? Essentially, a standing order so that each issue that comes out, you will get a copy set aside for you. Moreover, tying back to my earlier points about the direct market, this is the system that most publishers rely on for knowing the possible fan base and selling of a particular issue or series, and as a result, whether the series will continue. There's numerous elements to this system which frankly would take a video unto themselves, so for now, I'll let me just keep it simple. When you have a series you want to get or you want to continue, just go to your comic book shop and do the following. Hi. I'd like to set up a standing order for this fine comic book title. Sure, we'd be happy to do that for you. Do you know the diamond pre-order code? Sure, it's... Or, oh, no sorry, I'm afraid I don't. That's okay, we'll be able to find it in the diamond catalogue. We'll just take your name and set you up in an account and you can pick them up at your convenience. This part is important because it's the bread and butter of comic book shops and it's what keeps them open. Awesome, thank you so much. I'll be sure to come in straight away when you have the book and purchase that for you. And congratulations, you've just pre-ordered a comic. Okay, so I hope that gives you some insight and some ideas on how to get into comic books and hopefully become one of those new regular readers. I'm sure there's lots more questions you have too, so anything you want to know, please feel free to leave in the comments and I'll see if I can make a video and help you out there.
Remember, if you have even the slightest interest in getting into comics, you are absolutely welcome. And there are hundreds of thousands of fans out there who would love for you to join us. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe for all the latest updates from me here at Joe Glass Comics. I really do hope you consider joining us and become a regular reader of comic books, whichever ones that appeal to you. And I hope you find a whole new group, hobby and world to lose yourselves in and find millions of new friends. Much love.